The ROI analysis we just did gave us a single classification accuracy number per condition. This is useful if we have an ROI a priori, but what if we want to look at the whole brain? One method to do this is called searchlight analysis. The searchlight is composed of a cluster of voxels of a given size specified by the user, which is consecutively centered at each voxel in the brain. The above ROI analysis we did before is now done here in miniature, with a leave one out cross-validation performed at each position of the searchlight. The classification accuracy is then stored in the center of the searchlight and the process is repeated for the next voxel. To run this analysis, make sure the Haxby ROI script is highlighted and then click on Save, Save Copy As and call the new file Haxby MVPA Searchlight. Open this new file in the terminal by typing open Haxby MVPA Searchlight. And the first edit we're going to make is to change the CFG analysis line from ROI to Searchlight. Also, since we're examining a relatively large area, Let's increase the searchlight radius to 5 voxels. Later on, in lines 50 through 53, you can decide to instead change the units of the searchlight to millimeters instead of voxels, and whether to make the searchlight spherical. Also, if we want to run the searchlight across the whole brain, and not just the mask we specified previously, comment out line 31, which specifies the mask that we used for the ROI analysis in the last video. Let's also uncomment lines 53 and 54, which will make the searchlight spherical, and print out a series of updates as the searchlight runs across the entire brain. Lastly, we will change line 69 from confusion matrix to accuracy minus chance, which will create the accuracy map. Then save the script and run it from the terminal by typing Haxby MVPA Searchlight. Now you may get an error like this if you did the previous tutorial because we already have results that are in that SPM results directory. So let's copy and paste this CFG results overwrite right after the coding defaults and rerun this command. You will see the same training and testing data figure as before, along with a figure that shows the group of voxels being used as a mask for the searchlight. Every few seconds or so, the group of voxels will move to a different location, demonstrating how the searchlight moves through all of the voxels in the brain. This will take some time, so I'm going to fade out here and come back when the searchlight analysis has finished. The result of this analysis is a file in the SPM Results 1 directory called resaccuracy-chance.nii. Let's overlay this file on the subject's co-registered anatomical image in a viewer such as AFNI. After copying the file rsub1t1w.nii into the SPM Results 1 directory, we can then load this in the AFNI viewer and experiment with different viewing settings. Here, I'm going to set the co-registered anatomical image as the underlay and the res accuracy minus chance as the overlay. In particular, pay attention to the slider, which represents the accuracy level expressed in percentage. If I set it at 12.75, it's only showing those classification accuracy voxels greater than that number, and I can set it to a higher threshold as well. Remember that the values in this image are the accuracy scores minus chance. Since chance in this study is 1 8th or 12.5%, any negative values are accuracy scores less than chance, and any positive values are above chance. For example, if in a certain voxel we find a value of 56.25, that means the classification accuracy at that voxel is 56.25 plus 12.5, or 68.75% total. Now that we have both ROI and whole brain searchlight results, we can repeat the same procedure for all of the subjects in our study. We will learn how to do this in the next video.